unprecedented time, a period in history when people all over the world feel forced to deal with an invisible threat, the COVID-19 virus. And this raises many questions for us, for us, such as why is this happening? Is God punishing humanity? Will, you know, what will the future hold? And how can I survive this? And the pandemic makes us ask the big questions, the essential questions, and we're hungry for those answers, especially as we see the number of coronavirus cases and deaths rising daily. So for me, I try to pay attention to how the spiritual thought leaders understand a crisis like this. I want to approach it from a spiritual perspective because it's super easy to get mired down in just the facts. Um, the, you know, as, as physical human beings, as, as spiritual beings in, in human physical bodies, it's easy as, for us to just stay mired in all the details in the news and to not take a you know, mile high view of what's really happening from a spiritual perspective. So I've been paying attention to how some spiritual thought leaders um, understand the pandemic. Their perspective has resonated with me and, um, and I know it's true. Uh, I've come to the same conclusions myself. So I wanted to share a few of those with you um, to s in the hopes that you'll find the insights um, uplist uplifting and that they'll give you hope for a better future, okay? So um, I've written a blog post about this as well. The link to it is, um, is in the information about this YouTube video, or you may be on my blog right now and seeing this video there. But the blog post I wrote is quite lengthy and it pulls on the, the, the wisdom of a um, Hopi elder, of two uh, very wise rabbis, and um, also of a woman who channels information, spiritual information uh, about the time in which we live. So first, um, what comes up is this idea of, you know, is God doing this to us? Is this some punishment or retribution? And no, I don't think that that's what it is. That's not what I hear at all. What I hear is that, um, that for those of us who are spiritually inclined, that we should know that everything is a divine orchestration and it's always for our higher good, okay? It may feel tough in the moment. It may feel as if we're being punished, but that's never the case. The case is that things are being orchestrated for our higher good. And if you look around, you'll see that things are changing. Sorry, I have a piece of paper here that fell that things are changing, that people are, uh, people are changing. They're coming together in different ways. They're helping, they're making masks, they're putting um, their money into, you know, corporate companies are putting their money into making respirators. Uh, people are delivering groceries. They're singing from their balconies to stay connected with each other and positive. And that's a positive change. Our consciousness is raising um, as, hu as human beings. And we are, we are shifting and transforming as spiritual beings. So it is a divine orchestration for us, but we have a choice. If we're in the orchestra, then, you know, I believe that everything is a co-creation with God, with Creator. And so if we're co-creating, then we're part of the orchestra. If, if God or creator or source or universe, whatever you want to call it, is, is, the, is orchestrating, is the conductor, then we're in the orchestra and we have to choose how we are going to, what we're going to play, what instrument we're going to play, what kind of music we will play, will we create noise or actually actual music? Will we create something pleasant or something that is abrasive and unpleasant, right? So we have many choices here. And uh, the choice now uh, is to level it up in terms of your consciousness, in terms of your spiritual alignment, in terms of how you deal with others and how you show up. Now, we've been given um, a pattern interrupt. Basically, we normally go about our days, uh, you know, busy and uh, busy 
and distracted and life can tend to be feel pretty uh, pretty distracting and chaotic and as if there is just no time for the things that are important but we've been given this pattern interrupt and first of all it's interrupted the way we live our lives we're not running around anymore because we're stuck at home right and so we uh, we, we find that we have time on our hands and we're, our, our, the basic rhythm of our days is different, right? And so that's an opportunity for us to, to take a look at what kind of patterns we want in our life, what kind of habits we actually want to have in our life and to create those, right? But it's also a pattern interrupt in terms of how we think, what we believe, and it's time to ask some important questions about that. What do we believe about God? What do we believe about humanity? What do we believe about the future? What do we believe about our ability to co-create or to make a choice that impacts our destiny? So we want to, to really think about that. You know, what do we believe about our, our food? Is it safe? Do we believe that uh, people are innately good? Right? So use this pattern interrupt to to adjust your life towards what you would like it to look like, how you would like to spend your time, and begin to, to pay attention to your thought process, to your beliefs, and whether your beliefs are true or whether it's time for some new ones. It's also a time, as I said, for realignment. I think that we get, um, in our rushing around, we get, uh, we lose our alignment with ourselves, with others, and with God. And this is a time to realign uh, there's, um, interestingly, um, a rabbi who I mention in my blog post, Sir, Sir, I can't pronounce her name, Rabbi um, uh, Firestone, Sira Fire, Sira Fire, I can't pronounce her first name, Firestone, <laughs> Rabbi Firestone. She uh, writes about how this virus, COVID-19, that you can actually take the root of that word and in Hebrew, it, it comes down to a word that is equivalent with Shekhinah, the, the feminine presence of God that is, is typically here with us on, on this earth plane. And um, that Shekhinah is just one face and there are nine others and they are the masculine faces of God, but she receives and then flows into the masculine faces of God. And so then we have one and nine. So we have COVID-19 or Kavod-19. In Hebrew, the Kavod is the word for Shekhinah. So this is an interesting thing to look at that the, the, the word we have for the, the name we have for this virus comes from a spiritual source or could be seen as coming from a spiritual source. And what she says is that really this is a time to realign with earth, with humanity, with God. And I believe that that's, that is true. And we can see how the earth is healing, the pollution is going down. We can see how people are connecting in new ways. Uh, and we can see that there's an opportunity here to also realign with ourselves in the time, the stillness, and with God. We're approaching Passover and uh, Easter. And what I see is that this period we're in, this pandemic, is a time for us to both rise up and to pass through. So if we just look at Passover for a moment, Passover we're told that we're, we're moving through a narrow place, right? We, the, the, the Hebrews were, or Israelites were pushed up to the edge of the Red Sea to the shore, and then God parted the waters and they went through this narrow place. Um, this narrow channel to get to the other side. And I see this as a transformation um, that we're going through, a transformation where we do need to pass through this particular narrow place, the pandemic, to come through the other side. And we have some choices here about what that's going to be like and how we can co-create something new and better. Also, it's a time to rise up, to be reborn, to um, you know, in the, in the Christian tradition, um, this was the time that Christ was crucified and then reborn, right? And so we see that same kind of symbolism here, that we, we are kind of put on the cross and then um, allowed to give, to be reborn, to rise up 
as something different, something, something um, transformed, okay? And something that can be a role model for others. The pandemic has really done a great job of getting our attention. And sometimes it's hard for us to, to focus on something other than what's right in front of us. And so the pandemic is now right in front of us. The virus is in front of us and we have to put our attention there. Um, but as part of that, the uh, um, White Eagle, a Hopi elder, talks about the fact that we have the opportunity to walk through a portal uh, or we can fall into a hole. And the hole comes from a continual focus on the news and being, feeling negative and fearful and um, uncertain. But if we can actually move beyond that and see the spiritual aspect of this pandemic, if we can uh, be positive, if we can have faith, if we can uh, remove ourselves from the constant news in order to go inward, to go outward, to go up, right, to, to connect and realign, we will move through the portal and we'll be transformed. Uh, this is a lot like a vision quest. And that's what uh, White Eagle Mint talks about. He says there that this is, um, he, he describes the vision quest that people in um, indigenous uh, cultures, they go out into the wilderness. They go out into the wilderness and they sit there all alone with no food, no water, no shelter until they pass through a portal, until they get some sort of message that transforms them. They get some kind of knowledge or wisdom downloaded to them that helps them see what their role is in the world, what their purpose is in, the, in life. They come back and often change their name um, because they're transformed. And now they have this vision of what it is that they are to do in the world. And each one of us right now is on a vision quest. We are in the wilderness and it's time for us to transform ourselves. Um, in the Jewish tradition or in the Old Testament, you know that uh, the Israelites went into, you know, after they crossed the Red Sea, they went into the wilderness for 40 years. And some say that's because they needed to transform, that the elders needed to die off, to die, to pass on, and that uh, the new, uh, the younger generation had to become, uh, move into those spots because they would have lost the old ideas, the old ways of thinking, um, especially their, their belief about being enslaved, right? To be, because they were enslaved in Egypt. And so they wanted to have, God wanted them to uh, come into the promised land transformed with a different way of thinking that didn't, wasn't about being enslaved. So it's a little bit like that right now that we need to, to really look at um, how we can use our time in the wilderness. We can use this vision quest to come out on the other side transformed. And I really believe that this is a transformation in our level of consciousness and our ability to realign or to align with something bigger, something greater than us and uh, to, to have more humanity, to not only be uh, a cooperative humanity, but to have more compassion, more understanding, to come from a heart space. So that's what I see, um, both from my own, uh, you know, what I see and understand and from what I am receiving from other, from spiritual thought leaders out there. And I just wanted to share that as a way to inspire you and to give you something different to think about and to encourage you to take advantage of this time, to use it as your vision quest and to come out the other side, to walk through that portal and to come out transformed. I'm Nina Amir. I'm the Inspiration to Creation Coach. Uh, I love helping people combine their passion and their purpose so they get inspired and they take inspired action. They get some inspired results and that requires being in spirit, really. Um, I talk a lot about the fact that I'm a high performance coach and that's all about personal development. But personal development and spiritual development or personal growth and spiritual growth, they go hand in hand. Whatever's stopping you from being aligned with God, being aligned with yourself, being aligned with your purpose is coming from a block you have in terms of your personal development. We need to have you grow personally in order for you to grow spiritually. 
Sometimes though, the spiritual transformation happens and the personal development goes right along with it. So they just, they're hand in hand. And this is my passion to help people uh, grow spiritually and personally. So if I can help you do that, please reach out to me at nina at ninaamir.com or just go on over to ninaamir.com, take a look around. If you would like to do some high performance coaching with me, um, I do take a little bit of a spiritual bent with it. Uh, if the person who's coming to me is uh, open to that, but you can get a free 90 minute strategy session with me by clicking on the link above and filling out the application. So do do that, you know, do that if that's of interest to you. Fill out the application. Now is a tough time. People are struggling. And if you're struggling, then let's get on the phone or a Zoom call for 90 minutes or so. And let's talk about where you are and getting you from where you are to where you want to go with nothing getting in the way of that. So that's it for today. As always, go out there and achieve more inspired results. Mm -hmm.